Good evening everybody, Dave here in Altoona, Iowa. Welcome back to Scale Models Midwest. Here on the workbench tonight, the midweek update, as you can see through the thumbnail that I've started to mock up the engine into the chassis of the 5 liter LX SCCA Tribute. As you can see, it fits, but requires a lot of surgery to the inner fender well panels. As you can see right there, I might still be cleaning this up a bit. I had to cut out an awful lot from there to get that to fit, especially for the tubular exhaust manifolds. And also had to clearance the chassis just a little bit so I could fit in um, solder for the uh, exhaust pipe that will run from the exhaust manifolds and then out back. Um, I'm not sure what all I'll plan on with this one. I have a couple of Cobra convertible kits that I might scavenge the catalytic converters from, adapt them to this car, and then run straight pipes out the back, or I'll have them dumped from the sides um, out ahead of the wheel wells, much like the old AAR Cudas of, I believe, 1970, which I thought was a pretty sweet deal. So. What I have here, as you can see, is I mocked up the Iceman 5 liter Coyote V8 into the engine bay, and I wanted to see if the hood would fit without having to go with a, a hood scoop. Now, of course, press down on it, yeah, naturally it won't clear, but as I've been working with engine setbacks and where I need to put cross members and what have you, I can see that it fits, and it fits just fine. If I lift up underneath, as you can see there, and up underneath, I've done some surgery to the Iceman chassis, but I'm not done yet. I'll explain that in a moment. So, looking at this kit, a lot of the comments I had from the other video, thank you very much for commenting. Thanks again for the subscribes and the likes. Um, I decided, after looking at the comments and listening to some of the, the comments that had suggestions, really good ones, I decided that I'm going to scratch build a lot more on this kit than I intended. And I'll show you what I plan on scratch building. Uh, in addition, I plan on using everything that Joel Mendoza from Iceman sent over for this kit. Not just the chassis front, but the chassis back, the seats, the brakes, the rear end, you name it. I'm going to use everything. I want to see how far I can go out of my comfort zone without going absolutely crazy in the process. So stick with me, I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I was looking at was the uh, brake setup for the car. I originally looked at getting a set of the Pegasus disc braking calipers for 19 inch, but if you notice they're really pretty small in comparison to what Iceman had with the chassis setup which by the way is back in stock. Um, he had the initial run sell out real quickly. This is the full setup. That would be the chassis, the brakes, the front suspension components, as well as the rear end. Um, it now looks like it's back and available. And I liked it so much, I'm just gonna go ahead and buy another one because I've got a truck kit that I could utilize that for for a future build. Again, highly recommended products that he has. So. I think I'm gonna go with this brake, and here's why. When you look at this, I am actually deciding I'm gonna use this tire and rim setup for the car because I can't get my Volks. That's okay. So when I look at this, the brake and the caliper fits so much better. And I think once I have the calipers painted, they're gonna show up that much better on the finished model. When you look at the chrome piece, it's just nowhere near as large. Obviously I'm doing this with one hand. It's nowhere near as large. And when you've got a 19 inch tire and rim combination like this, you want the brakes to match. Otherwise it's just gonna look tacky. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Iceman brakes um, I'll detail those out really nice and neat. 
thinking if I wanted a Brembo look, it'd be like red calipers. But uh, if I'm painting the car, the TS-19 metallic blue, I think I might do the same thing with the calipers. So on to the next part of the build. So the next thing I was looking at was the roll cage. And I had already started, you know, I did a mock-up utilizing this kit's roll cage. And if you remember in a previous video, I had to cut and remeasure and cut and put it together. I haven't done any sanding on it yet, but this is basically the final product. Once I get it completely sanded, primed and painted, I will then add to it. I thought at first I could go on ahead and scavenge out of one of the four kits I have of this same 90 Mustang LX 5 liter drag racer. But then I thought, well, it has its own six point roll cage. That six point roll cage does not have this center bar. I could easily cut one little piece of plastic out and glue it to that and use that. But then my kit will be without a roll cage. So what I'm gonna do for this one is I'm going to step way out of my comfort zone and build my own. I'm using 1 8 inch tube from Evergreen Scale Models. And it is the same size as the roll cage that's in this kit. I've seen some YouTuber videos. I'd like to think, uh, like say Dr. Cranky has done this. I think Lucas C has done this as well. I'm going to watch their videos. I highly recommend you watch them as well and see how they did theirs. I know they heat it up and they use a jig and get that all taken care of. So I'm currently in the process of putting that together. Tomorrow I'm going to actually start to uh, heat and bend the tubing and eventually get the six point roll cage that I want. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully by Saturday, I'll have that update for you. Okay, first off the front end. On the Iceman chassis, there was a dog leg kick down and forward. I cut about an eighth of an inch off of that. And then I cut the little Z portion off and then glued it together where it was straight. I still have some filling and sanding to do, but Joe Mendoza does a fantastic job with these chassis. The more I look at him, the more I say, this is great because he gives you way more material than you need for most kits. So there's a lot of wiggle room as far as cutting and shaping, whatever you need. When I looked at this, it gives me plenty of room to put an electric fan. Uh, I'm going to scavenge an electric fan from one of my NASCAR kits in my stash. Um, you notice you're here you can see where I did a lot of surgery on the inner wheel wells but if you notice also I sanded smooth this because when I mocked up the tire to the suspension basically is that now I'm not going to have these rolling these will be glued in place when they're done but I'm going to trim this up just a little bit more and then Lucas C has an excellent how-to on one of his videos regarding putting in um, like a 20 thousandths or 20 hundredths thickness plastic, a couple of layers worth, and then sanding it until you get what you like for a wheel flare. So I'm gonna do it with that one. Uh, I don't think I'll have to do it just yet with the back, but I might have to, more on that in a moment. Um, one thing I also noticed is underneath here, I still have to put in cross members because I'm using Mendoza's chassis kit, but I still need to put this in place. It'll fit. I got the setback the way I want it, but I'm gonna have to cut the pieces out that I've marked in black, and then I will sand it, file it to shape. I may have to file a little bit of this front portion, but it will give that realistic appearance that I want on the suspension and still allow clearance so it won't be scraping the ground or what have you. I still have to, my plan is, I put this piece in from some scrap that I had from uh, Joel Mendoza's chassis when I cut it. I'm gonna put another one just above here and that way I can run the tubular exhaust headers down and then run solder the exhaust going back out. And again, still planning on running the dumps out just before the wheel well. But if you notice, I have this chassis set up for using the front end of Mendoza's kit 
the back end stock with the wheel tubs that I've already built. And I'm um, looking at the comments from Sunday's video, taking them to heart, I think I'm going to change this. When I look here, again, I cut this part off and I just tack glued it in place for now. And I started looking at it going, well, if I put in the part of this chassis here, which I still plan on using, I could get it to fit with this, this particular piece, part of Mendoza's chassis. Right now, I could do that, I gotta get it to fit. The other option I had was again raiding my NASCAR parts box. I've got a UPS Taurus 1988 from MT Ertle. And I took out their chassis and I put the Mustang body on top of it. And as you can see, it's so why I've got some magic marker marks on it. And I thought, I need to put in better wheel tubs. And then I looked at the chassis and I thought, I could do that. It's doable. I could use those wheel tubs sand the outer edge in place but then I started looking at that Taurus model kit and I thought well it's Dale Jarrett's I like Dale Jarrett I bought it so I could build it I never have so again back to the scratch building let me show you what I decided to do okay so what I did was I listened to you the readers the viewers because you suggested I use the entire chassis, and I did. What I did was I actually cut about another, oh, I don't know, another scale, like, foot out of the chassis. And what's really cool about these is that with this chassis that Joel Mendoza has from Iceman, they have little locating pins where these fit perfectly. So, again get this kit if you're looking at building trucks or even a, a chassis like this pro touring you name it um i'm doing it one thing i noticed is it actually fits now i had to well that's fun Ta-da! warts and all you're gonna see this progress anyhow i had to cut into the back part of the kid plastic even more. So I am ditching this part. I'll probably put it in a parts box and use for something else. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to probably, most likely, fill in a panel in the front as I get the roll cage built. A benefit of doing this right now is if you notice I can tie the roll bar tubes behind the hoop directly to the chassis and that's what you would normally do with your roll cage you don't just put it to sheet metal you tie it to the sturdiest part of the car and that's usually your frame so this is perfect and the fact that I can set those two bars right to the chassis and then I'll cut sheet plastic to go around it. I'm still going to have a rear seat delete, but it looks good, I think. I had to cut those little tabs off the back. And then, instead of, I mean, let's face it, the viewers are right, little 8.8 .8 is not going to deal with the power of the Coyote motor. So I'm going to adapt that really strong rear end from the kit that I got from Mendoza from Iceman and I'm gonna set it up. So I don't know, I like what I see so far. Ultimately I made sure that it would fit the width of the chassis, Joe Mendoza was right. It's a perfect fit for this 125th scale kit. Um, 
Obviously, I'm going to be adapting some stuff. I might reuse little slivers here and there of this, but otherwise, it's going to be a lot of scratch building on that rear end. I'm going to scratch build a fuel cell. Um, most likely, I'll melt, mount the fuel cell above the frame rails there, and then just maybe cover this with sheet plastic. I think I'll go that route. But um, I, don't know, I, I like it. The hood closes, the engine when it's in there. So I wish I had more of a build for you this evening, but I just wanted to show you what I've been working on on the workbench to kind of test fit parts. Um, you definitely, when you're building your kits, you fit, you test fit, you cut, you sand before you put your first coats of primer and paint on. Otherwise, you'll probably frustrate yourself when you start putting stuff together and stuff doesn't fit. So for me, I'm gonna do this one right. Um, I appreciate your comments. I appreciate your support on this. You're definitely getting me to step out of my wheelhouse and try stuff I've never done before. So thank you for that. I'll keep you updated. I'm off on Friday, so I'll be spending a lot of time on the workbench tinkering with this and starting to put stuff together. So Saturday, hopefully I'll have a nice little setup of what I've done and maybe have some of this in primer by then. So with that, I'm just gonna say thanks again for watching the channel. Thanks for your continued support. Please keep supporting the channel by watching and, and clicking the notifications. Uh, tell your friends about it so they too can subscribe and watch the channel and watch the progress of any kit that I build. And again, as always, if you see a kit that's out there that you like, go on ahead and buy it, build it. And I've already got some people that are sending me emails with pictures of builds that they've made. So I'll be posting those on shortly. And uh, I would certainly appreciate it if you did that. I'm going ahead and get you taken care of there. Also wanted to give it a shout out to uh, Blue Ox. Um, go and check out his channel. I'll send the link below in the description. Blue Ox hit 500 subscribers in one month. And like me, he's just doing it for the fun of the hobby. Uh, just getting his kits out there and showing people what he does. The guy has some excellent kits that he's built and his uh, model room is pretty sweet too, I might add. But uh, definitely go check out his channel, subscribe to him. Congratulations there, Jason. Great job on getting 500 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, Help him get to a thousand. Help me get to 500, but help him get to a thousand. With that, have yourself an awesome evening. We'll catch you in the next video.